Welcome to Scrubcast, where we take a closer look at the research happening at Stanford University's Department of Surgery. I'm your host, Rachel Baker. Today, we're speaking with Dr. Jeffrey Norton. Welcome to the show. Good morning, Rachel. Dr. Norton is a professor in the Division of General Surgery and what I would call the consummate surgeon scientist. You have been performing basic research as well as surgical operations for over 40 years. Is that correct? That, that is correct. What led you to become an academic surgeon? Uh, well, when I was a medical student, I didn't really go into medical school thinking I would be a surgeon. I wanted to do a family practice. But when I worked clinically, I was really thought that surgery was a lot of fun and very interesting and challenging. My mentor was a surgeon named Watts Webb, who was a cardiac surgeon. He's the one who really mentored me into going into surgery and doing research. So basically, since I matched at surgery in, at Duke, research is part of the surgery program. So eventually I was doing both clinical surgery, learning how to be a surgeon and also doing research. So if you look at my training history, it was 10 years, uh, six clinical years and four years in the laboratory. Wow. So I did do a lot of research while I was training. For sure. Well, so I was lucky enough to get a copy of your CV while I was stalking you for my guest research. And I learned that you have authored more than 400 papers in peer-reviewed journals on an incredibly wide range of topics from gene-directed surgery to abdominal adhesions. What research are you most proud of? Well, I think I'm really the most proud of the gene-directed surgery. And that actually started when I was first in a laboratory. At that time, I worked with Dr. Sam Wells at Duke, and mm -hmm. we were doing research in multiple endocrine neoplasia type 2A. And in that disease, the patients all get medullary thyroid cancer, which is a significant type of thyroid cancer and can be lethal, actually. So basically we were looking for markers of the medullary thyroid cancer. And it turns out that calcitonin is a hormone, but it's also a marker of medullary thyroid cancer in those patients. So I actually, at the time, Rosalind Yallow won the Nobel Prize for developing the assay to measure small amounts of hormones, for example, in the blood, called radioimmunoassay. And I actually went and learned at a laboratory. I was at Duke, but I, I went to a laboratory at the University of North Carolina and learned how to do radioimmunoassays. And we isolated calcitonin from patients' tumors, and we immunized sheep to the calcitonin so we could actually do the radioimmunoassay. So I developed a radioimmunoassay, which actually allowed us to do surgery based on family history of medullary thyroid cancer or MEN2A plus high levels of calcitonin in the blood. After initial work with calcitonin, eventually we identified the RET gene mutation as the cause of multiple endocrine neoplasia type 2A. So we were able to do thyroidectomies on patients with a family history of multiple endocrine neoplasia type 2A, and the RET gene mutation, even if they had normal calcitonin levels. So it was surgery guided by gene abnormality. Hereditary diffuse gastric cancer is another example of gene-directed surgery. Those patients get CDH1 mutations, and we were the first group actually in, in the world to do total gastrectomy based on CDH1 mutations of patients who, who had a history, a family history of hereditary diffuse gastric cancer, had the gene mutation, but didn't have any clinical evidence, even with endoscopy of gastric cancer. So we did about 40 patients uh, who had that group of symptoms, and most of them, I think all but two, actually had signet ring cell adenocarcinoma of the stomach. So that was a pretty big contribution because that's a lethal disease and we were able to cure those patients with the surgery. I 
remember that grand rounds that you did about this and the uh good morning america interview we were actually on the uh today show ah. <laughs> You mentioned you originally went into medical school thinking you'd do private practice. What made you choose surgery instead? Well, I think that what's important, I think, is fun. And the reason I went into surgery, I thought it was more fun than medicine. <laughs> in the sense that we had, I, I played two sports in college, football and also lacrosse. And I was actually pretty good at both. I was captain of the lacrosse team, and I was a starter on the football team for three three years. How so, did I not know you were a lacrosse player? Yeah, it's not on my CV, but <laughs> basically, um, so I like sports because, you know, there's a lot of planning involved. In other words, when mm -hmm. you do this that type of sports, you you know, you always have plans like how, how to run the offense, how to run the defense. And so surgery to me is a lot like that, where you, mm. it's a, it's an intervention. It takes a turn and it, it happens just once usually. And, uh, you know, you have to have a very significant plan of how you're going to do it, what the potential complications could be, how you're going to avoid them. And so there's a lot of like, I think sports in surgery. So that's why mm. I, I, I think that's why I was enamored by surgery. For me, there's a big clarity between sports and and surgery, and you know, and then also when you're done operating, you you feel proud, yeah. you know, you're happy if the patient when the patient does well, and you talk to the family, and so it's it's a lot like having you know a little a W in the inter, yeah intervention uh, at a certain specific time point, all those things. Mm -hmm. Super cool stuff. You have been an incredible mentor over the years to countless individuals. Um, why do you think mentorship is important and, you know, why do you make time for it? Sports also, like surgery, is a team phenomenon. So you have to have people on your team that you're working with and you have to trust them and they have to, you know, trust you and learn from you. So so basically, that's another reason why I think I've been a good mentor is because of my experience with, uh, you know, being captain of some types of some types of sports and also mentoring people and how to do well in surgery. So and also, I think that the idea of fun that I mentioned was is important because you have to be excited about what you're doing. You have to have fun because it's a big time commitment. Mm -hmm. And it's a big energy commitment. So so I think the laboratory also is a chance to be creative and to have, you know, real relationships, you know, meaningful relationships with your mentees. And so I feel like the mentor, which could be me and the mentee, we're all equal. We just work together. And, you know, like I always get their input and we develop a plan to in this case, uh, do an experiment to make some kind of learning. Mm -hmm. That's important uh, for the group and stuff. Yeah. Oh, I love that. So I think they're all kind of similar, to be honest with you. Yeah. <laughs> I see the similarities. I don't think I had, I had thought about it in that way before, but I see it now. Every show we ask our guests the same two questions. Um, are you ready? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> okay, here we go. Who is a surgeon you admire and why? You know, there's many surgeons that I admire, but I think the most admiration I have is for Murray Brennan. I was in his lab at the NIH for four years, and then I went back to Duke to finish my residency, mm -hmm. and Murray actually went to Memorial Sloan Kettering, and he actually arranged for me to take his job at the NCI under Steve Rosenberg. So that was really an incredible positive experience for me. In other words, we actually could do research. We could work together. I've actually mentored six fellows each year wow. and we had all the money we needed to do research for each individual fellow that, you know, I worked with. And so it was like the best time of my life. And uh, <laughs> if you look at it uh, and all my children actually were born when I was at the NCI in this time. And so it was, it was actually a really 
pleasant, happy experience. Yeah. So Murray Brennan is actually, he's the one who made it happen. When I worked in his lab, he was like a father figure for me because my father mm -hmm. died and I was distraught from that. And uh, Murray actually helped me get through that. So I think, you know, when you work with somebody so closely, uh, you have a lot of respect for them. Wow. Yeah, that's that's really a lovely story. Second question is, what is the best advice you have received in 10 words or less? Well, I think that the best advice that I could give to students or residents is to be sure that they're in something that's fun to them. In other words, where, that they're happy. It's such a commitment. You know, like nowadays, I think there's a lot of burnout and difficulty, you know, with hours, uh, the amount of time you have to work as a resident in surgery. So, so less people may be going into it. But the ones that go into it have to really go into it because they really enjoy it, that they think it's something to work for, that it's more than just money or whatever. It has to be something that's truly meaningful and fun for them. So yeah. that's what that's what I believe. I'm noticing a theme here, fun. Will there be uh, much fun in your plans for retirement? Yeah, you know, I, I haven't really... <laughs> I haven't totally looked at it. I don't look at retirement that way. You know, I feel like it's not going to be much different than the way I am now. So right now I'm actually working it, I think full time in the lab, but I come every day and mm -hmm. uh, I work with just two other people and we design, you know, experiments and we do them. And so it's really enjoyable to get the results, especially if we, if we design the experiment properly then whatever results we get will be meaningful. And uh, so that's really a big time commitment. I, I actually, you know, like my family too. So <laughs> I'll just spend more time with my family is what I think when I retire. So I, I won't be going to work at all, to be honest with you. That sounds amazing. I can't imagine Stanford without you, and yet you totally deserve all of the rest and relaxation because you've just had this incredible journey uh, and given so much to the field of surgery. That was our final question. Um, anything you wanted to add before we sign off? I hope that this conversation will allow uh, people to understand more about what it really takes to become a surgeon scientist. In other words, uh, you know, the best example we have here is Deshka Foster. I mean, she, yeah. I've worked with her for three to four years, I think, in the laboratory. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's very committed. She's a very hard worker. But yet, she's a mother and she has two children. And she's doing a good job with family as well. So mm -hmm. she's outstanding. And I think what makes her outstanding is just her ability to enjoy what she's doing and to realize that it's, you know, it's actually fun and it's exciting to get results. And it's also exciting to take good care of patients and, uh, you know, see them do well. So, uh, you know, cancer surgery is a difficult disease because, or discipline, because, you know, sometimes the patients don't do well. We all, we see patients who have you know, metastases and we can't really help them or they just have to get chemotherapy. So I think that um, that's also a, a big downer, you know, to some people. But mm -hmm. I kind of I kind of have this optimism that actually helps me uh, deal with those problems. And I think Deshka is like that. She's committed and she's optimistic and she will develop new methods, uh, which will also be useful for treatment of patients with cancer, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Definitely, I'm looking forward to it. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. You, uh, we'll see you at Fest Shrift in about a month. Okay, thank you. And that brings us to the end of another episode. If you like Scrubcast, we hope you'll tell your friends and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Scrubcast is a production of Stanford University's Department of Surgery. Today's episode was produced by Rachel Baker. The music is by Midnight Rounds. And our chair is Dr. Mary Hahn.